So here we are saying matter is anything you see, hear, smell, touch, taste. Uh, it is also anything that has mass, what we call weight, and then takes up space. It exists in several, several oh. shapes, color, texture. You know texture? Texture. Mm. Yeah. You know it. And other forms. <laughs> yes. So what are yes. those living things and stars are made up of matter? Since our definition mm. of matter is something that has weight or mass and takes up space, therefore, it has all the properties. Now, by studying matter, mm. we learn to understand how and why some things work out. That's why you are studying what? Matter under chemistry. Yes. You were given a brief definition of chemistry in all levels in your senior one mm. when you started. What do you think chemistry could be? Yeah. Chemistry is the study of is the branch of science mm. that deals with the study of structural composition, structural composition. <laughs> in relation to in relation to matter. In relation to matter. So when you get to any substance. You know it is structural yes. formula. You know the reaction it undergoes, mm. and then the properties it has, both physical and chemical. Mm. Now that is the chemistry you mean. So here, matter. Yes. As long as you know that something, the, the way things work out, then you are now studying what? You are understanding, you are studying what matter is. You are trying to, to tell you yes. that I know how something behaves. That if I look at something in this way, this is what? This is, uh, there are three states of matter. Yes. yes. Three of them. The first one is? The first one is liquids. Liquid. The then solids. Solid. Solids. Solids. Mm. And gases. And gases. Yes. So air is part of a gas that we know. Then yeah. solid we'll see anything that looks like a solid. Yes. Anything that looks like a solid, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. An example of a solid. It can be a stone. A stone, yes. A desk. Hmm? A desk. A desk is the uh, which material do you use for making a desk? Which is wood. Wood. That's what I want. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. And what again? Uh, a, desk, a desk has many things on it. Do you have wood and what? And metal. Yeah. Metal. So when you talk of metals, those are steel. Yes, yeah. steel is part of what? It's part of metals. Yeah. There is also. There is also what? So all those things we look at. Yes. In the, in the category. Sorry. No. Yes. So all the metals, the ones you know as the steel, copper. All those are under metal. So we can look at them in that category as what? Metal. Mm. So wood, wood is also part of it. Then we have uh, the stones, the ones you know. So all those are solid. Then the liquid. Mm. Liquid is yes. the common example is water, isn't it? Yes? Yes. And there are many other liquids also. We yeah. Have, uh, those is water the common example? That is the commonest. Which other liquid do you know? Yeah, the commonest is there is juice, there is urine, right. urine, okay, juice. Mm. Yeah, so those are part of whatever. Do you see yeah. these writings down? 
the writings, yes. the ones about the properties of, of the no, states no, of no, matter. No, no. This one on the this one's written down. Do you see them? Do you see anything on the paper? No. no. When you explain, you don't see. This one having this one having arrangement of particles. Okay. Now, do you see them? Some I'm seeing only liquids. Liquid, solid, gases. You see them, isn't it? I'm only seeing liquids. What about solid? <laughs> the arrangement of particles. I'm seeing only liquids. You zoom your screen. Now, do you see? I've the, tried, but you see not get it. Here? Actually, this is some, uh, where I'm writing, you see, do you see something there on the paper? Yeah, I've seen. I've, now I'm seeing. Okay. Yeah, I'm seeing. Thank you. You have seen liquids? Yeah. You have seen solid? Yes. Gases? Uh, so all these particles, as long as you study this, they give us what we call matter. Yeah. yeah. All these three yeah. things, this is the way matter exists. Matter can exist in a gaseous state, matter can exist in a solid state, matter can exist in liquid state. So state. this is what we are trying to understand to so mean here. By studying matter, we learn to understand how and why some things work. So here yeah. they are saying after this, we can manage and control these things to make new things that improve our lives. Just by studying these three things, you know that the things, this, this is the way these things exist. So if you want to alter something, you look yes. for ways of making sure that you can convert one to another. So in that process, that is the chemistry we need yeah. at the end of the day. So if you have the ability of converting yeah. one yes. solid into something usable or tangible to human, you have created your own thing. Therefore, you are an important chemist in the compound. You get that? So here, they are saying this. The study of matter is so important because it guides us in classifying I'm not getting that. Yes? Mm. Yes. You are not getting me? Yes? Your network is kind of low. My network or the voice? I think it's jamming, jamming. Make sure you are okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here we are, we are, the study of matter guides us in the classifying substances. Uh, we are recording a video here such that in case you want to re, you restudy this, you go to the website, you download the video, you watch or you summarize something out of it. So don't be scared about that, yes. but uh, we have to continue. So here, to understand yeah. matter, you need to take a closer look at it. So as you observe or examine matter more closely, more of its parts are revealed. So most of these matter properties or, or what is inside this matter, you can't see with your naked eye. But you just see water flowing. You don't know what is inside. Okay? There are other things we use for observing things inside the liquid. Mm -hmm. So if you study and examine those materials or those substances inside the liquid, you will understand and you will reveal most of the things inside that uh, those states. So now the term matter has been introduced. Yes. We can use it to say there are three states of matter that one you have known. So here we are going to look at this. Many yes. of them. Do you see this diagram down? These are groups of sorted items. Yeah. This one is the one yeah. I'm pointing at. That's a chair. That's a chair. What about this? It's a cup. A cup containing what? Either tea or water. What is this? That's a, mm. a fuel, whatever. Fuel like. tank. 
Yeah, fuel what tank. What is inside yeah. it is fuel. Fuel. We're well, most really looking good. at this. What is this? That's a vacuum cleaner. You can either say a vacuum cleaner or Oh, what? The gas, yeah, this one that has carbon what, gas, carbon yeah. yes. So there are yeah, many I'm other saying things it. here. So all these are part of tangible things and you can see most of them are what? This is under which category? Under matter which solids, it yeah. has solids and liquids. These, these are solids and liquids. This yeah. So here they are telling you, look at the picture, make a table, make a table with three columns labeled solid liquids and gases write all these at least this one now you can do isn't it <clears throat> now what are the different properties what are properties of the different states of matter properties of different states of matter so to understand these properties of matter you need to look yeah. at the composition of the particle yeah. or, the, or the nature of that eh? substance you have. So if you know this yeah. is a chair, what shows that this thing is a solid? Hmm? If this is water, what shows that this is water? If this is air, yeah. what shows that this is what? Air. So those are the properties. Yeah. Those are the properties we need to know. Hmm? Such that if you look at it yeah. physically, you just know this is what? The solid. At the yes. end of the day, they will not be asking you, this is a chair, what? In a chemistry, just tell us that is a solid. Whoever doesn't know, you tell him to get books and read. Oh. Okay? So here, they are saying, yes. describing the composition of matter is not easy, since the actual composition can only be inf inferred rather than observed. Okay? Here they are saying, if you look at the, the chair, you just observe and see that is what? The chair. And the state is what? The solid. It's a solid. Now, it's there, a are others, there are others that are hard to know. You know, why we are studying this property is when you burn or you heat one of these things, one of these elements, they change, they tend to change from one state to another. You get to another. Mm. So now there are two yes. types of changes. You know the two types of changes. Two types of changes. The types of changes. Yes, that occur. Physical change. We have physical change. Yes. Physical change. Chemical change. And the chemical change. chemical change so that you know when i burn a certain state of matter it changes from one substance to another if it changes completely which type of change is that when it changes completely, completely yes that's a where, chemical change where no new substance is formed is a chemical change so here we expect yes. uh, which one forms a new substance a physical change. Physical. Yeah. When you form a new substance, that is physical change. Yes. What of biological change? Biological changes, those those occur in human. So we don't study them under chemistry. That is biology. Yes. Is it okay? In the chemistry, okay. we deal with the two changes. That is physical change and chemical yeah. change. When you bring in biological change, <laughs> that is for biology now. So yeah. under physical, when you look at something physically, this one is like heating of ice. Heating of what? Ice. ice. When you change ice, when you heat ice, what does it turn to? It turns into water. It it turns into water. What was the original state of ice? The original state of ice was solid. Solid. It has turned to a liquid. A liquid. Is there anything that has changed in the transferring of ice into water? It 
transferring of ice into water. Mm. Is there anything that has changed? No. So it is only the state that has changed. The state that is from solid. Yes. Solid is what? To liquid. But the liquid. color, the color has not changed anywhere. You get. So that is what we call a physical what? Yeah, I get. A physical change. You get it. Physical change. But when I get a piece I of get. paper, when I get a piece of paper mm. and I burn it, the paper turns to what? To ash. The paper turns to ash. Now, the same state, solid to solid, isn't it? Yeah. You, or maybe for you, you think ash is, is air. Ash is a solid, isn't it? Even paper is yeah. a solid. So, 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 so there is nothing here that has changed completely, but only a new substance has been formed. A new substance has been what? Formed. So this has one is what we call as a chemical what? A chemical change. A chemical change. So have you got the difference? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Here. Welcome. So by, by observing how particles behave in water and smoke, scientists develop the particle, the, 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 the particle theory of matter to identify their composition. But if you look at this, the way particles behave inside that matter, you will know that this is this is this is the one. This is a solid, this is a liquid, this is a what. So here. The particle theory of matter is one. All matter is made up of extremely tiny particles. That's the first one. All matter is made up of extremely tiny particles. Extremely tiny. Yes. Extremely tiny particles. That is the first way you know. Let's look at this here. That is, suppose you break. This is an example here. Suppose you take a piece of charcoal. You know charcoal? Yeah. And you break it up into tiny pieces. Into tiny pieces. What is the size of charcoal you will come up with? The tiniest piece it's of tiny. charcoal. The, the tiniest piece of charcoal that you, you can come up with is what? If you start pounding charcoal, do you have any piece of charcoal that will be that will be left? Yes. No. Actually, what will remain? Yeah, there would be. Actually, what will remain is what dust. Dust. Yeah. Yes. So now that dust, those particles are too, too, too tiny. That's what they are meaning here. All all matter yes. is made up of extremely tiny one. Particles. Tiny particles. You will you will reach an extent of seeing the big the big piece of charcoal you had as dust somewhere. So those particles are too tiny to be seen by human eye. If you look at if you get if you get that charcoal and try to space it up in the process of looking for the tiniest piece, you will fail to get one. But if you use some other equipment like electronic microscope. You will be in position to see that the tiny yeah. particle can be observed by what? Your eye at that particular time. Yeah. So yeah. these are the spaces between the particles there. So, so the second one. The second one is here. It's Each your substance. Your substance has it its own kind of what? Particles. particles they will never look the same you get it charcoal yes. has no substances whichever whichever thing you try to get even wood it has its own tiny one substances particles. so different particles have their own different substances so this one is a known case so particles attract each other there is a, a topic in, in the chemistry called the bonding. Bonding, where small particles join each other to form a different compound. 
So this is where you get this, that each particle attracts what? Each other. So you find the metals attract non-metals to form other compounds. That's just another type of bonding. So when you reach that part of bonding, you will know what to mean. So here, so they are saying particles are always moving. Do you believe so? Yes. This is the way you are trying to identify the particle theory of matter. Particles are always moving. moving. Like if you observe with smoke in a, enclosed in some tube in a microscope, you'll find that those particles are always constantly randomly knocking each other. So they are moving, they're in motion. Yes. So then here, number five is saying particles at a higher temperature move faster on average than particles at a low temperature. Oh. If you try to remove that five, that particles at a high temperature, those ones at a high temperature, move faster. Oh. Move faster. What causes that? Yes. What causes that? The, why why the particles think, at a higher temperature? What do you think causes that? That if particles at higher temperature, particles at higher temperature move faster. Then those at low temperature move slowly. I think it's the heat. It is a what? The heat. heat. What does the heat do to the yeah. particles? The heat like mm. uh, what does the heat do to the particles? The heat makes the particles contract. The heat does what? Contracts the particles. No, the heat, the heat is like, a, do you know something called a catalyst in chemistry? Yes? Catalyst. A catalyst. Yeah. A catalyst. Somehow. Uh, so what do you think a catalyst is? Catalyst. Mm, according to Obang, what is a catalyst? Yeah. Kind of right. Okay. Let me let me explain to you in a, a layman's language. Yeah. You know, you know when uh, two people want to fight, you get. Yes. You never know they are even yes. in the verge of stopping. Or they they were about to stop the what? The, the fight. Then from nowhere, mm. someone comes with a lot of words. Hey, hey, so and so, do this and this. And then he gives the other one hunger uh, to, to fight the other person. That, is, that person who does that work is called what? Is catalyzing those two people to, pass, is to, to fight. You get it? He's giving people more strength or energy to do what? To fight. That is in simple terms, a catalyst. What a catalyst does, it just speeds up the rate at which something is supposed to do what? To happen. You get it? Yes. So if yeah. they ask you, you don't bring those terms in the chemistry that if a person is supposed to fight, you bring that. That is just an example of how you are it's supposed to be explained. Okay? Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you the definition as we go on. So you mark those words, those are the questions you're supposed to be asking. It is now part of your what? Assignment, not somewhere because you have to get the definition. You get? Yes. Since, yeah. you, since your curriculum is also part of research, make sure you try and get the correct definition before I give you the right one. Okay. okay. So write it somewhere and say they told me about the catalyst. That is what it does. So get the correct definition. Correct definition. Yes. Then I will do what? I will correct it if things become high. Okay. Yes. Uh, so this is yeah. this. that these are things 
there are things we experience in our daily situations. So these are the things we experience in our daily situations, which can also ex explain how solids, yeah. Yeah. liquids, and gases do what? Are made up of small particles, which we cannot see with our own naked what? eyes. For example, for example, when your clothes, the clothes are drying, what do you notice? Yes. When the clothes are drying, what do you notice? When the clothes are drying. When the clothes are drying. Yes. When the clothes are drying, what do you notice? Yes. Like the water begins dripping down. How do you tell a lay person that uh, a clothes is drying? If they ask you, for you, a person who is doing chemistry now, how do you tell a lay person that uh, the clothes is drying? I notice that the wetness of the clothes the like, wetness. begins cooling. Okay, the first thing for you to know is what are the things inside the wet clothes? Yes. Because here they're telling us. Matter is made up of extremely tiny particles. Now, here we are seeing mm. a cloth that is wet, it is drying. What are the things that are there? Mm. Mm -hmm. It's heat. You have what? It's heat. Heat. Uh -huh. It's also a tradition. There's what? Like heat, heat, heat is the one, the source of heat is the one that provides the radiation, isn't it? That is part of heat. What are the things you see? Because in a clothes, we have a clothes material, isn't it? We have a clothes material. A clothes material. Which other thing is there in the clothes that shows that this clothes is wet? Water. Water. Okay, now this is our water. So yes. if they tell you to describe what happens mm. when the wet clothes dries up, what do you do? When they tell me to describe what happens. Yes, when like, the wet clothes is drying up. Like I see, Hmm. How the water is mm -hmm. getting off the clothes. How the water gets off the clothes. Yes. So basically here, this and, what uh, seeing, yes. This is what you are seeing down here. Where I'm tapping. Yes. You see this. Mm. It reads when a clothes dries. Yeah. Yes. The, the water from the clothes gets what? Guess what? Evaporated. Evaporated. And Evaporated. The water vapor, and the water vapor formed from it goes to the what? Mm. To the atmosphere. Atmosphere. Now, since, since you have learned chemistry, you should be in position to tell people what happens when the clothes is drying. Okay? Mm. So when clothes are kept yes. under sunlight, due to the sun's hot rays, the molecules of water which are present in the clothes, gain energy and do what? Mm. Evaporate. So Evaporate. Sun, sunlight acts, acts as what? A catalyst there. It is just increasing the what? The temperature. Mm. You get it? The heat, the temperature. Yes. Yes. It is increasing the temperature so that water molecules do what? Move faster. Yeah. Yeah. So here yeah, we are looking true. at this. Sugar, another example is here. Sugar gets mixed or dissolved in what? In water. What do you think happens? Sugar in water. Yes. When sugar gets mixed up in water, yeah. what do you think happens? It dissolves. It dissolves. Where do the sugar particles go? What happens to the sugar particles? Like they dissolve. Uh, what happens to the size? They, 
What happened the size the, of the sugar particles? The size of the sugar particles, mm. they become smaller and tinier. Actually, the simplest one is they reduce in size. Yeah. And disappear in what? In the water. In the water. So here they are saying sugar gets or disappears once water is what? Is added. You get it? Yeah. The molecules have, have broken down into atoms. You know, atoms yes. are too small to be seen by human eyes. So the those crystals you yeah. see, they reduce all the of the water to form the atom and this pass in the water. Yes. So they, they remain roaming in the water. Those atoms remain roaming mm. in, what? in the water. In the so water. The sugar molecules cannot go away, but they can be passed in the water. That's why when you taste the water, it is you will know that this is sugar. This is salt because they have dissolved in water. Yes. And because of the taste. In the water. Mm. The taste. So they will still be sugar molecules, just not attached to other molecules of sugar. So here they are yes. saying the water and the sugar particles will be mixed together and form a new substance. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a car moving. Yes. If, mm. if this car was not at a high speed, would you see this smoke coming out? No. Oh, okay. Would you see this dust there if the car was moving at a very slow speed? No. So here they are saying, if a vehicle raising a lot of dust on the Maram Road, if the rock breaks, it can form a fine powder which we call what? Which we call dust. When you travel on the dust road, you may notice that very tiny dust stays in the air for a long time, isn't it? Mm. And they can easily get into the car. Mm. Because their spaces are small. You find that even, even if you close all your glasses, of the old whatever's of the car, you just will find yeah. yourself inside the what? The car. the car because of those tiny spaces the car has. Yes. Yes. So you can see even very fine dust which your naked eye cannot see enters in the what? So you can only see that part after they have collected themselves. Okay. So that's what you see there. So it, it takes millions of particles to make a grain. So think about air. This is what you're saying. Okay, here we are seeing that eh? we cannot see air particles because they are very much smaller than the grains of dust. We know that they exist because we breathe in air particles. We also feel the wind blowing in many, in many what? We also feel the wind when many air particles are moving and hitting us. Okay, so as temperature reduces the particles in the wind becomes heavy and when they hit you you feel the coldness that is what happens so or one before